Over the years, I've seen many lifters who struggle to gain weight or simply remain lean year-round without really trying much. So in today's video, I'll discuss what these five observations are. Starting off with the most important one, natural appetite. Isn't it interesting how most of the aesthetic transformations you see on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok are always similar? Skinny guy being blown away by the wind decides to bulk up. Next thing you know, he looks like Z's, brah. It's usually not a 300 pounder cutting down to 150 shredded. That does happen, but it's definitely the minority. And what's important to recognize about these individuals is this. They already had abs, or were super close to developing them. There's a reason why they have somewhat of a beach body after three to six months. It's because they weren't really that fat. They were skinny fat. And when they put on that additional muscle mass, just the ratio itself and the illusion that extra muscle gives you in terms of looking leaner, provide that look. So this is not me trying to discredit these people as I was in the similar boat myself. 120 pounds, had abs. What I am trying to point out is that they had a small appetite starting off. It's not their magical diet or secret training knowledge that you don't know about. They probably did things exactly the same way as you, but they were a little bit more auto-regulated within the nutrition aspect of things, which is what leads to having a lean physique in the first place. They say abs are made in the kitchen. It's true. Yeah, you can outwork the diet to a certain extent. I'm gonna talk about that later in the cardio segment, but for the most part, if you're not overeating, you're good to go. And most hard gainers are chronic under eaters. Even when we talk about what they eat, because we've all heard it. Oh, I have a super fast metabolism. I can eat a pizza to myself and I don't gain weight. Ask yourself this, how often these people eat a pizza? It's not every night, it's probably once a week or every two weeks. You'd be shocked to realize how many of them don't actually have a lot of cheat meals or if they do, it's very minimal and when they consume it, immediately after, they're fasting because they don't have the appetite to re-eat a large meal after two hours. A fat guy can. They can eat five big meals a day if they choose to. The skinny dude, one to three tops in most cases, especially when it's a cheat meal or something large. They can go hours without eating. It doesn't bother them. So I'm going to expose something that a lot of these fitness influencers aren't telling you. You ready for it? A lot of their full days of eating are full of They don't actually track their macros or their calories. Not all of them. The ones that are really serious definitely do. I'm just going to say that many lean lifters have a general idea of what they're consuming. They have their staple carbohydrates, proteins, fruits, and vegetables. But they can't tell you exactly what they consumed in a day. Which doesn't really matter in their case. Because when you plug it in on Chronometer and MyFitnessPal throughout the months, you'll see that they're relatively consistent regardless. So the real factor in staying that lean is appetite. And some people actually are honest with what they film. And you can quite literally see the portions. It's not massive and they're filled up. Actually, I've seen some of these cheat meals and they're not even that big to begin with. So even when we talk about that extreme, it's nothing that a fluffy person would be impressed with. Let's keep it real. So now that you know this information, what can you do about this? Well, find ways to cut your appetite. Which luckily for you, I made a video about that a while back. It's an old one but a true gem, so be sure to check that out. But the main thing is gonna be a high protein diet combined with a lot of whole food plant-based options. Oh yeah, you wanna drive up that fiber, make sure that you're consuming tons of vegetables, dark leafy greens, name the game, lots of beans, whole grains. Man, listen to real nutrition experts, not the marketers that are trying to sell you their high consumption of other products, which I'm not even gonna dive into what the that is right now. But there's a lot of shady stuff out there. Truth is, you'll be fine with a mostly plant-based diet. I'm not telling you to go vegan, but the closer you are to it, you'll find that appetite is a lot more regulated. Mix in some fasting as well, really streamlines the process. So make appetite suppression your new focus. And with that said, let's move on to the second point, which is diet consistency. Your average lean lifter eats the same food every single day. Or there are staples. They don't deviate away from the daily diet, which they may or may not realize is one of the best ways of lowering appetite. Novelty is your worst enemy 
when it comes to shedding off fat. It's why a lot of foodies are so chubby. It's also why when you go to buffet, you can easily pile down five plates. Whereas if you went to any other restaurant, you'd be good with one plate, even if the quantity is massive. So it's not an issue of willpower or even desire. It's the fact that you're mixing everything up. The more variation you have, the harder it's going to be. Of course, I'm not telling you to eat bird seed. Make sure that your meals are tasty, but have your staples. Don't rotate through 50 different meals. So one week you have Haitian food, week two Greek, week three Italian, week four Spanish, week five French. For one, you should be minimizing the amount of cheat meals, especially if you're struggling to lose weight. It should be once a week maximum, but most of you are probably better off doing once every two weeks or maybe once every three to four, if I'm being really honest, some guys really need that. But with what you eat, be a little bit more minimalist. So not only will everything be consistent on paper, so will your natural appetite, which is one of the biggest advantages of this approach. Obviously enjoy life, but don't experiment too much on the daily diet. All right, so I filmed this video in two parts. Let's do the switcheroo now. Now that'll bring me on to my third point, lifting experience. What I've noticed, is that the less jack they are, the leaner they tend to be. The super elites, unless they're competitive bodybuilders, and I'll talk about that at the end, they tend to be on the fluffier side. Why? Because it's harder to recomp when you put on most of your muscle mass and strength. Anyone who's been in the trenches for long enough will attest to what I'm saying. You will make better gains in a surplus or in general. Slightly bulking. Doesn't have to be excessive. I'm not promoting dirty bulking here, but you can't tell me that someone who's doing recomping strategies versus consistently overeating slightly on a daily basis is going to get superior gains after a certain point. It doesn't happen. And that's why a lot of guys will shoot up a weight class to hit their ultimate goals. When you're novice and intermediate, you can burn fat and build muscle at the same time so easily that you literally transform. I can tell you for an absolute fact that taking your bench press from 185 to 315 will not require as strict of a diet. This is why it's so hard. When you're trying to get to that ultimate level of performance, everything's gotta be dialed in for the most part. And if you don't do this, prepare for physique maintenance, which is pretty easy to do. And that's why a lot of fitness influencers hit a certain degree of muscularity and popularity and then stagnate on their own individual progression. Maybe their channel will continue to grow at an exponential rate, but they stop focusing on themselves. And I'm not saying this is bad. Just know that their path is easier than yours because you're pushing the limitations of your recovery. And for that, it might involve a bit more food. But you don't have to get fat, obviously. Lean bulking is a solution in this case, which could be done by instinct. But usually at the elite level, guys are tracking not only the workouts with logs, but every facet of the nutrition, or at least the important markers like protein and making sure that their calories are somewhat consistent. They can ballpark it too, but it's not gonna deviate away too much. Like we don't see a lot of roller coaster action is what I'm saying. Whereas a novice can recom extremely easily. I talked about earlier how you can be skinny fat and then six, 12 months later, you got your abs and a little bit of muscle go with it. Intermediates, same thing. You don't have to be as strict. Some days you could be in a surplus, others in a deficit. Recomping effectiveness is absolutely correlated with lifting experience. The more you've been training, the harder this becomes to pull off. And then you gotta ask yourself if it's worth going down that path. Like sure, you can do it for the rest of your lifting career, but if it's gonna take that much longer, is it better? Wouldn't it be smarter to do a slight lean bulk? I think so. Not to mention the fact that for some exercises, your leverages will automatically improve, like the bench press. And I want you to put yourself in the shoes of someone who is experiencing slow gains and plateaus. When that individual goes from 165 pounds to 181 and notices that progress is returning at a steady rate, that is extremely motivating. It's rewarding, because if you didn't do this, it was gonna take that much longer. So you get comfortable at being heavier, got better energy, and the enjoyment out of life too, in the sense that more food can be consumed, you can be less loose, for the lean aspect of things. Like you don't care if you lose your six pack or it becomes more blurry when you're looking that much more massive in a shirt 
and you're overall doing well within the lifting. And when you're truly jacked, getting a bit of fat will not break your physique. You're still gonna look absolutely amazing. So that trade-off definitely becomes an attractive option. Now, my next point has everything to do with caring, which regulates the discipline process, as well as taking care of appetite and specificity of training, which puts you in check. Here's what I mean. If you're trying to be the best calisthenics athlete, no way in hell are you rocking an excessively fluffy state unless you're just trying to get buff from the weighted aspect. In a general sense, you're going to be between 8 and 15% body fat. And 15 is not optimal to function with body weight training, by the way. Look at the best gymnasts or people who compete in street lifting. There's a similar body type, and it's not about height or limb lengths. The identifiable factor is body fat percentage. And a lot of these people had different starting points as well. So I'm not going to pull the genetics card or talk about any things that I referenced before. Just the fact that you care about calisthenics and you want to be the best at it, and it's required that you're maximizing pound for pound performance, regulates what you're going to do with the diet and the drive to be better at pull-ups, push-ups, dips, all the skill work. That alone gives you an incentive to cut. You're not going to want to bulk up when you see that your numbers are going down on certain stuff. Unless, like I said, you're just trying to be buff. So the desire aspect, once you're wrapped in a type of culture, it really makes all the difference. Look at some of the powerlifters who just don't care about getting fatter because as long as their total goes up, it's all good. They don't have to be held accountable on the body fat side of things. Whereas a bodybuilder, he knows that if he's not lean enough to compete, he ain't placing well, even though all the muscle mass proportions might be on point. The guy who outdid him on the diet aspect is going to win. In a general sense, what many bodybuilders consider to be fluffy would be labeled as lean in many other sports. So if they're 15% body fat, they're already on a cup. You see how the culture plays a role in this? Whereas if you're competing strongman and you're 20%, you're like, yo, I'm in shape. I'm looking good. Sometimes it's just what you decide to be a part of. Because once you're in that world, everything takes care of itself. You're going to do what's required to succeed. That's just how it is. So pick wisely what you want to specialize in. Because once you're deeply into that world, it can be hard to get out of it. Just saying. And with that said, let's talk about the final point of today's video. And let me know if you want a part two, by the way. Doing cardio on a consistent basis. Yeah, you don't have to talk about it. It's no coincidence that the leanest people tend to be extremely fit while engaging in other activities beyond weight training, which can include daily walking, bike riding, jogging, swimming, fight training, something on the side to supplement the main workouts. These are not permabulkers. They're not people who falsely believe that cardio kills the gains. They do it all the time because they understand that it makes them feel better. And the calories that are burned make it effortless to lose weight even when diet factors have not been properly addressed. And that's the main thing I want to talk about. And I'll give you an example regarding myself. In 2019, I ran almost every day for six months straight. My weight varied between 160 pounds to 167, which was a lean body for me. Guess what? I was eating like an absolute madman. Equivalent to when I was 186 pounds. If I weigh out all the food, calculate it logically, it was the same quantity. Why I was able to get away with that? Because the activity level was through the roof. If I want to gain weight in that state, I would literally have to force feed. And sometimes my weight would go down. There's a reason why it was a range. I was usually 163. Effortless. The exercise was brutal. Sometimes you really don't feel like doing it. But the rewards were immense. And that's why you should do a similar protocol. Maybe not run as frequently as I was running. Because eventually you'll probably stop doing that. And that's when some weight gain can reoccur. Which will probably happen just saying. So find a routine that's realistic for you. It could be going for walks on a daily basis. Running two to four times a week. Including a little bit of boxing type workouts. I'm not going to talk about what cardio you should be doing. Just make sure not to skip it because that simple addition 
is often the X factor in making your diet a lot easier to follow and burning those additional calories that might be holding you back from entering that calorie deficit or being in a maintenance mode or not overdoing the bulk. Because sometimes guys will be in an excessive surplus, which is completely unnecessary. So just by that alone, the fact that you can lower the additional calories being consumed by doing a little bit of extra cardio is worth it by itself. So that's something I've seen over and over again. Lean lifters, don't skip out on this. So that's all there is to it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know how you related to the points I raised, and I'll see you next time.